Good morning. So nice to have you joining us on a beautiful day here in the Tennessee Valley. A lot of you we know keep your televisions turned to Channel 3, and we are so glad that you do. So if you are a frequent Today Show watcher, perhaps you saw recently a feature about a way to treat uh, depression that seems to be getting an awful lot of benefit. Well, you are lucky this morning because Charles Miller is kicking off the show with us. He's a frequent guest here with his Scenic City Neurotherapy. Good to see you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm kind of stumbling my way through here a little bit because I missed the segment on the Today Show, July 7th. Yeah. It was, uh, it actually surprised me. I didn't know it was coming up. Um, and then a client reached out to me and said, hey, have you seen this? Somebody who had done this with us. So what the, this is, whenever you're here, we talk always about the ketamine infusions. And I think that we're going to kind of tie things back in to that as well. But this is called SNT. Mm -hmm. It's the Stanford Neuromodulation Therapy. And what this is doing, and I'll let you take it and run, is that rather than if you have depression where something you're taking a, a medication that's kind of masking your symptoms, this is treating the underlying cause, correct? Uh, it's, uh, it's helping to rebuild the neuronal pathways in the brain, but specifically targeting where depression exists in the brain. So we're actually able to optimize communication, not just globally, like with, with, with what we do with ketamine infusion. Ketamine infusion treats many different things. Okay. Um, mood disorders, chronic pain disorders, uh, even cognitive issues, stroke recovery, but TM, uh, TMS therapy or transcranial magnetic stimulation has been around for some time and this Stanford neuromodulation therapy is an evolution of that using theta burst stimulation. It's a rapid burst stimulation to give uh, decrease intensity, more frequent treatments in a single day. Mm -hmm. So we're able to do 10 sessions a day. You're with us all day long, which starts at 8.45 in the morning and finishes at 5.45 in the evening. Whoa. Yeah, so the patients stay with us all day long. Is that tiring? Like, do you feel this? It's, um, it's one of these, th it, it's, it's, it's a long day for the patient, but it's not exhausting. The patient can drive themselves. So unlike with ketamine infusion therapy, it's not a medication they're receiving. It's an actual external stimulation that we are using our large TMS setup to provide. I know that you probably are aware that you use a lot of medical terminology. It just rolls off of your tongue. Sorry about um, that. But that's a good thing. But for the lay people like yeah. me, I know education is a big part of what you do. I asked you before the cameras rolled if how much um, of, a, of a working relationship you had with medical professionals and mental health professionals in the area. And you said when you all first started, there was that education component, but now you've got 100 plus people sending clients your way, right? Well, it's neurogenerative therapies are not something that is part of psychiatric training before 15 or 20 years ago. So if someone did their psychiatric training before that, they mm -hmm. didn't hear about this coming up. And this is unless they've been able to, you know, grasp it from some sort of secondary source. Right. They haven't been able to keep up with that. And so I've made, you know, made efforts, my, my group has made efforts to make sure that all of our providers in the area mm -hmm. know what this is, and more importantly, what it isn't. It's not magic, it's not a replacement for what they do. Right. It is a complement to makes what they do work better. It's just one more piece of the puzzle. Okay, I'm kind of stumbling my way through here, but there are all these thoughts that come into my head at one time. I want to go back to the SNT, the mm -hmm. Stan Stanford? It's Stanford Neuromodulation Therapy. So let's say that it was me, that I was in your office. What, would I be hooked up to something? What you is would. It like? It's an actual uh, like chair. It looks like a dentist chair. Um, we put you in a position, we actually target uh, using a, it's what's called stem guide mapping. Okay. Uh, it allows us to actually target in the brain the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex. It's the area of a Is part Is that of, here? It's right up here in the front and okay. it helps us, um, uh, it's where we process information. So by increasing stimulation in that area, we are stimulating neuronal regrowth on a large scale, but in a very targeted way where, we're, where depression lives in the brain. And so we're it's, you know, it doesn't make the, the bad things go away. It makes you better at dealing with the difficulties of day to day. I'm a very um, analogous person. Mm -hmm. I, I have to have a Me visual. Too. Okay. When you talk about things being stuck 
in the brain? Mm -hmm. Is it like a clogged drain almost? Uh, yeah, yeah, like a pipe that is, it's you, like when we were processing a trauma or a period of heightened stress or, or even prolonged depression, we start to see these areas of the brain that don't communicate as well, these neuronal lesions per se that yeah. develop. Um, lesions is a scary word, but at the end of the day, it's just an area that's not communicating very well right. or at all. And when these lesions develop in the prefrontal cortex where we're processing all this stimuli coming in all the time, right? Uh, it helps us, it, it's, uh, we're able to better process new stimuli, which makes things less overwhelming. Okay, so last time you and I talked, we mm -hmm. used that word lesions. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it was on the air mm -hmm. or off camera. We had a long conversation. Mm -hmm. So from what I remember, these lesions can grow and grow and grow the more depressed you are, the more trauma you have right these lesions it, kind it of it can be a coping expand. mechanism that your brain actually does if some, if you're you know if neurons are firing in the in the brain rapidly uh, which like we see with say a traumatic event yeah occurs uh, your brain will f be firing rapidly and your brain will shut down these pathways because they're working very hard but not coming to any fruition you know they're not being productive and so it will divert that energy elsewhere and say we'll come back and turn these on later when we sleep at night typically is when our brain kind of resets and turns these back on. Well, with PTSD, it creates these large lesions in the brain that don't turn back on. And that's, oh. you know, it's mental health is far more physical in nature than, we've, than we give credit. Okay, that's where this SNT can kind of come into play because I think you said after you go through this whole long day, mm -hmm. um, your, you know, your brain's kind of been exercised in a way that mm -hmm. day. So when you go home and you sleep, did you say that there's a protein? It's, that so when we stimulate the brain, essentially irritate the specific area of the brain, the brain responds by releasing this protective protein called brain-derived neurotrophic factor. This protein, it is protective while we're awake, but when we sleep at night, actually begins to regrow brain cell connections. Okay. Connections between one brain cell and another, which enhances the way our brain communicates. The, so the point about the sleep, we mm -hmm. hear a lot that if you're not getting appropriate sleep, that's a contributing factor to mental health. So, I mean, it, it, just the basic need to get a good night's sleep, does that need to be stated uh, a lot? It, it can't be, it can't be un overstated. It's uh, sleep, if two days without quality sleep, you move into psychosis. It's, you know, reality starts to lose a little bit of its meaning. You start to disconnect. It's, it's very hard to have good mental health when your sleep is interrupted or, it, or poor. So I know that you did not see the episode on the Today Show, July 7th, neither did I, but the, the person who called in to tell you about it, mm -hmm. was the segment talking about like proven benefits of this SNT? The SNT, Stanford developed this because TMS therapy, the classic transcranial magnetic stimulation, is very slow. It's one session a day for six weeks and then th usually three weeks a wean off, 36 total sessions. What S&T allowed us to do was take that whole process and move it from a six to nine week process into an aggressive one, you know, five consecutive day process, 10 sessions a day, five consecutive days. Now it does require the patient to spend the whole day with us and they're the only ones that get to use our TMS machine that entire week. It's because we, we, that whole piece of our practice is devoted to them. How common is a practice like yours? I mean, are, are people catching on to this all over the place? There are, there are a lot of people that are, that are starting to see this, a lot of other providers out there that are starting to see the benefit. And we're all over the country, you're seeing them pop up. Now there are different um, standards of practice. Each practice is kind of, and every medical practice runs sure. through the standard of the sure. provider that is, you know, directing it. But um, making sure that, you know, that this is done ethically and to the highest standard that you know that your provider is is showing you the literature mm -hmm. behind why they do what they do they need mm -hmm. to have reasons for they, why they do what they do right um, and, that's and, important. and Charles and I talk in these somewhat generalities but he said earlier how this S&T targets directly to a mm -hmm. specific area of your brain uh, the the you can't be overstated either. When people come in and they talk to you, they're there for a long time initially because you want to really yeah. know them, right? Well, we want to know them and we want them to know us. Education is a huge component to 
our process. If you don't know what you're getting into and you, we don't have adequate expectations, it's hard for the patient to judge success. Mm -hmm. um, if you're coming in and looking for one thing but then find another, you may not realize that you're moving in the direction we want you to go if we right. don't teach you what that is. Right. I think it's a very fascinating conversation and I have a feeling there are folks watching today who are thinking I've got to call my friend or I need to let my child's teacher know about this because people don't have a way mm -hmm. of knowing what you're doing if you weren't coming out here talking. So thank you for your time. Oh, I'm happy to be here. It's Scenic City Neurotherapy. Uh, their offices are right there on Shallowford Road. The phone number is 228-0579. Online at sceniccityneurotherapy.com. If you're currently working with somebody in the mental health profession and you want to mention this to them, there's a good chance they already know about the work that Charles is doing. Uh, if you are not yet and they come to you first, you'll also help them find somebody, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Everybody, you know, the, the follow-up component with a counselor is imperative. Okay, great to see you. Absolutely glad to be here.